comedians you're gonna have here today. Please welcome Mr. Rick Reynolds, everybody. Come on. You know, at birth, we're yanked from a warm, safe place and thrust into a world we have no way of comprehending. Childhood is a constant routine of punishment and confusion. Hell, we're depressed and misunderstood as teenagers, then frightened and unprepared as we become adults. In midlife, we watch as our youth slowly slips away our dreams for greatness, becoming pathetic memories. Old age brings loneliness, infirmity, and the constant fear of death. Hi, I'm Rick Reynolds. Is it just me or did those first two guys suck? Hey, we're kidding. We joke, ladies and gentlemen. This is New Orleans, it's hot, I love it. We are so lucky, look at us. Good looking people in this great town, well dressed, you got money and stuff, and yet you'll still piss and moan about your lives because it's the human condition just to complain. You ever do this, everything's going well in your life, but you'll still, you'll get a hangnail and you can't stop playing with it. You know, it kind of hurts, but it kind of feels good on the other hand. It's like an in-between kind of sensation. Finally, you'll get so sick of this thing, you'll just grab it like this, pull it, rips all the way up to your neck. You got a big piece of skin dangling from your chin. I hate that. I guess it's just starting to dawn on me what the meaning of life is, and it is to be happy. To not fuck with other people, to not hurt other people, but along the way, to be happy. Do you know people that just aren't happy? It's because you're taking life's little everyday pleasures for granted. You ever sitting watching TV, eating some cookies? You go to reach for the last cookie, <gasps> and it's gone? Well, at some point during the evening, you ate that last cookie, but you never got that last cookie enjoyment. <laughs> Then you have this expectant cookie sensation the rest of the night. And in desperation, you'll take your tongue and search through every recess of your mouth for tiny cookie particles to enjoy. Well, I suppose that if I have a philosophy of life, it's that you should eat every cookie as though it were the last cookie. Now, I think sex is the perfect example of this because it is the most enjoyable thing, right? Now, you all know, hopefully, you know what it's like to have great sex. Now it does not, don't bullshit me, it does not happen every time. One in every four or five, maybe even one in every 10 times, when more than just your body is keyed into what you're doing, but your mind becomes perfectly locked in and you become a thrusting beast. Because let's face it, that's what you become during great sex, a sweating, carnivorous, insatiable, pulsating sex god. Of course, I can only speak for myself. sex isn't quite as good because other thoughts will filter in and diminish the experience, right? I mean, you'll be doing it and it feels good, but then you'll think, hey, Letterman's on in a couple minutes. Yeah. Sometimes your concentration is drawn away from sex and it's not your fault. You know, a barking dog, a noisy garbage man, your wife coming home, hey! Any of these things can hurt the experience. I guess you gotta just kind of like what you've got. Do you know these, they're always, people are living for the future. Oh, the weekend's coming up. I'll be happy when the weekend's here. Oh, I've got my vacation. Fuck that. Be happy right now, right this instant. It's all you've got, right? I know people now that are famous. And I, this is what I always wanted, to be famous. This is the first leg, I guess, of my fame trip, right? To do this, the HBO Young Comedian thing. But my friends that are famous are no happier than I am or than you are. Because there's a, you know why I want to be famous? Because I want my name to live past my years. 70, 80 years isn't enough. I want my name to go on. Because right now, if somebody broke into my apartment, stabbed me to death, the headline tomorrow would be, comedian found in pool of blood. That's all I am, and it's an occupation. You're never gonna see like, snappy dresser found in pool of blood, right? Now, if I was famous, they would drop my occupation and use my name, because you guys would know me, right? Then it would be Rick Reynolds found in pool of blood. I like that. 
that's very classic. Of course, if I was nobody, they'd just print man stains carpet. <laughs> just not good enough for me. The major way we live past our years, we won't relinquish our lives, is to believe in God. Now, I don't believe in God. I don't want to bum you out, but I'm probably going to burn in hell for eternity. That's okay with me. You ever been awakened early in the morning by a Jehovah's Witness? You're walking downtown, you're accosted by a crazy street preacher. You turn on the TV, there's Jim and Tammy Baker, Jerry Falwell. Has it ever dawned on you that heaven might be a very annoying place? <laughs> now, we have Catholics here. Yeah. I know very little about the Catholic faith, though I did see the Pope recently. In San Francisco, going down Geary Boulevard, five people thick, and he zips by in this big glass cage. I couldn't help but think, big deal. You know what might have impressed me? Fill the cage with water. <laughs> now, tie his hands behind his back. Give him like a mile to get out of there. That would be something to me. Now, my grandmother, my grandfather was also a scary guy. He had a stroke in the, about the mid-30s that left him basically paralyzed from the neck up. Walked around the house like this. Put kind of a damper on his career. He was a lounge singer. I continued touring, but it's pathetic. Who's gonna pay good money to see? Hey there, you with the stars in your eyes. No. This is a novelty act. I'm his grandson. I can't look across the dinner table. He's down like this. <laughs> so, Ricky, how's school going this year? Ah, super, Grandpa. Hey, listen, could you do me a favor? Never look at me again. <laughs> Interesting thing about this crowd, I think, the people right in here, very hip group of people, am I right about that? I think for you, comedy is like theater. You're looking for cultural enrichment. Thank you very much for coming down. The people in here want dick jokes, right? to any kind of a group of people, the dick joke, the lowest common denominator people are the truly hip people, and I'd like to prove that right now. <laughs> I've never been too good with women. I think it's because I admire them too much. In fact, I have a tendency to sort of bend them over a pedestal. <laughs> I don't want to say I was an unwanted child, but I was born with a coat hanger stuck in my head. I was also a battered child. I was never actually deep fried, but I was battered. See if you can follow me on this. If Lassie were to be impregnated with a cantaloupe seed, wouldn't her puppies be called melancholy babies? <laughs> my brother Mike, three years ago, was in an accident and lost his arms and legs. Well, actually, he's my half-brother. <laughs> If you were to get into an accident, you lost your arms and your legs, but you still had a penis. Santa Lucia. Hey! You could still hitchhike. Santa As long as you were excited about where you were going. <laughs>